stab us. <coughs> Appreciate the prayer, Dale. <coughs> um, Andre did say that he would fill in for me if I pass out, so I appreciate that too, Andre. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> Let's have prayer once more as we come before the throne, shall we? Father, once again, we just pause for just a moment, asking that your spirit will attend to us just now. May our hearts be open and our minds clear that as your spirit speaks to us and shows us the love that you have for us, shows us Jesus. I pray, Father, that we will respond in such a way that our relationship with him will deepen, we'll know him better, more determined to serve him more fully. We thank you that you are patient, kind, and loving, and merciful, that you are always there for us, even when we fall. We thank you for lifting us up and carrying us through. We thank you for your patience with us. So, Father, I just pray now that um, not what's heard or said from the front, but what you speak to our hearts, may that be more important is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> if you have your Bibles, shame on you if you don't. If you'd like to turn to Philippians chapter 3. If you saw in the bulletin, I've entitled this A New Year. And even though we are one month already into this new year, spring is coming. Amen. <clears throat> our conversation a little bit this morning in our Sabbath school department uh, talked a little bit about how we despise snow, but I'm actually looking forward to eternity because in my mind, God has a planet with nothing but snow. Joey, I'm going to learn how to snowboard. <laughs> I like snow. Philippians chapter 3, beginning with verse 7. Paul says, But what things were gained to me, these I have counted loss for Christ. Yet indeed I also count all things loss for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish that I may gain Christ and be found in him. Not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering, being conformed to his death, if by any means I may attain to the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already attained or am already perfected, but I press on, that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead, I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, I'm sorry, I'm going to skip down to verse 20. For our citizenship is in heaven, from which we also eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. A lot in those verses, and we could pause at one verse and just fill this time. <clears throat> couple of things I do want to highlight to Paul in this life what did he consider to be gain the knowledge of Christ to know him and to be found in him everything else to Paul was considered to be what 
just rubbish. <clears throat> Have you ever used the phrase, what's the bottom line? <clears throat> what will be the end result? When the rubber meets the road, and when we cut to the chase, when it's all summed up, and when it's all said and done, aren't those important questions that we ask ourselves when we're making decisions, either business decisions or personal decisions? Usually revolve around phrases such as that. <clears throat> Do we use those phrases when it comes to spiritual things? Eternal things, like how will this decision help me stay on the path to heaven? We've reached another year. When the next year arrives, what will be the bottom line of my spiritual condition? And when I reach the end of my life, how will my personal choices up to that point have improved my chances of being found in Christ? I'm not talking about things that we need to worry about. I'm talking about things that we can be assured of. Because there is assurance in Jesus Christ. To know him, to be found in him, brings an assurance that it makes not much difference what the end of my life will be because now I have the assurance I will be found in him. And he will keep me through whatever challenges I may face. I have a friend, I had a friend that... Um, was visiting in the hospital. Maria actually called me, asked if I would visit him. And um, <clears throat> when I opened the door to go in to see him, I actually stepped back and thought I had the wrong room. Didn't recognize him at all. Lost a lot of weight. Hadn't seen him in a little while. But he was from the uh, Wilson Church, and he... Um, he was big on stop smoking clinics. And when I got to meet him back in the early 80s, he had asked me if I would help with stop smoking clinics. So, man, for many years, we did. We worked stop smoking clinics together. And so I'm talking with Dr. Mike. And um, kind of hard to understand as well, but I had to get real close to, to listen to him and to hear him. I said, Mike, you remember the times that we would do the stop smoking and we'd have big classes and we'd have small classes. Sometimes there was just one person. There was one time there was a room, probably 20, uh, 20 people that would come. He says, yeah. He says, I said, you helped a lot of people. He says, you were there for a lot of folk. He says, I'd, I could have helped more. I should have helped more. And I thought about that as, my, as I left. Do we wait until we are on our dying bed and think, I wish I would have done more? Mike was a godly man, and that's not how he was, because he, put, he would put himself into every presentation that he did. But still, at the end of his time, he was thinking, I could have helped more. He passed away several weeks later. And um, why do we wait until just the last moment before we draw the conclusion, I could have done more? You know, what would it be like on our dying bed as we're laying there and we're thinking, that, well, our last bottom line wish be I wish I would have bought that SUV or that bigger boat or will it be I wish I wouldn't have settled for that 55 inch TV but I wish I would have gone with a 60 inch 
Or, or maybe for you, you hunters, maybe I, w- I wish I would have put that bigger rack on this side of the wall. And for the farmers, I actually use the illustration of, I wish I would have had five more cows. That would have been enough. And a farmer came up to me after, he says, no, it would have been a bigger John Deere tractor. That would have been a little better of an example. A couple of thoughts that I read. Although in one sense, the first day of the new year is no more to God than any other day. Yet he often puts into the hearts of his children at that time a desire to begin the new year with new resolves. Perhaps with plans to carry out some worthy enterprise and with purposes to depart from the wrongs of the old year and to live the new year with new determination. Has he done that for you? There's a lot that I could read from that this quote here, but she says, Ellen says, great importance attaches to this work of character building, for it is far-reaching in its results. We are builders for time and for eternity. And then she says, God has not placed you in this world to lead an aimless life. I like that. Shall the close of the year find you further advanced than you are today? Will you put away evil habits? Will you consider, be considerate of others, faithful, to do the work of a Christian? If you will carry the principles of right doing into all the affairs of life, you'll find that it will promote health of body, peace of mind, prosperity of soul. You will have a strength, a dignity, and a sweetness of character that will have a transforming influence on others. <clears throat> we don't know what this new year is going to bring any one of us. But it is my prayer, even though we are a month into it, that we will have a determination to put Jesus first in everything that we do and say and decide. He's all that we have that will endure. He's all that we have that will last. He's all that we have that sustains us and gives us strength. Let's not waste the time or the life that we have. As Paul says again, our citizenship is not here. Our citizenship is in heaven. From which we also, and may this be true, eagerly wait for our Savior and our Lord Jesus Christ is my prayer. This time we're going to separate for our (coughs) communion service. And I don't see that we have visitors with us this morning, so I'm assuming that everybody knows the routine.